Yeah, Gary Madsen at UTV Service. Today we're dealing with a 2017 Polaris General. It's had a hard start problem from day one. The it cranks and cranks and cranks and the cold will not start. Has he's taken it back to the dealer? In fact, it wore out the starter cranking it so much. The dealer took it back in, replaced the starter, replaced the stator, and sent him back out the door. At starter works fine, but it still doesn't start. So today we're going for a cold start problem on this Polaris General. When I'm checking this General out for the cold start, there's about four things that I'm going to do. We're going to hook up the computer. We're going to look at the scan and see if it's come out with any kind of a history code, any codes at all. There's two sensors on this that could cause that problem. Your coolant temperature sensor and your T-map sensor. Both those can cause this condition. The other thing we're gonna do is I'll get a fuel sample. Uh, bad fuel is a possibility. Of course, it's done this from day one, so we don't think that's it, but I'm gonna, that's a, something to check. Battery, your battery voltage has to be up to probably a minimum of 80%, and that could cause the problem, even though it still cranks. And then we're gonna go on to the fuel pressure test. Uh, low fuel pressure will cause a hard start problem. And the last thing we're going to check is the valve lash. Uh, valves that are either too tight, too loose will cause this no, a hard start problem in the cold. And so we're going to we're going to do a couple of things here before the next. I'm going to start the next video. I'm going to take off the bed so that way we can see things easier. I'm going to get the computer all ready for my the check engine light and we'll get videoed on that as soon as that's ready. All right, I'm here at the computer system, got it plugged in, got the check tech system hooked onto the computer. So it's reading the, any history codes. I've already looked at the history codes, any present codes, there's none showing whatsoever. So I can't really go on that. The two sensors that I'm concerned about here are the T-map sensor, which is your intake air temperature and this is reading exactly what it is inside the shop here. It's reading about 62 degrees. That tells me that sensor's working good right this minute. And it's got, there's your coolant temp sensor and it's reading the same exact thing at about 62 degrees. So it kind of tells me that the two sensors that I'm looking for or any codes aren't there. So I'm gonna kind of probably eliminate this, this sensor as being a problem. Okay. On the intake air temperature, what it does, this is your main sensor that it's going to read for a cold start temp. Because when it's reading this as cold, it controls the amount of time the injector opens up for more fuel. It's basically the choke of the old days. This is how it controls more fuel when it's cold and it needs more fuel. So this air intake temperature sensor has been, that's your biggest guilty one. The coolant temperature sensor, it's reading this too, but this is more for once it's warmed up and, every, and it's reading it, but here's for your cold start. That's your injector width opening. So pay attention to this one. All right, I've, I've removed the seat now, exposed the battery. So this is my next test coming up. So kind of getting a quick look at it. The first thing I do is I kind of grab these cables to see if I can move them. And, oh, look at that. Sure enough, I can move the positive battery cable. That might not be a cold start problem, but that's a sputtering problem or a miss problem in the near future. I've seen this multiple times, and what happens? It loses communication to the computer. If it loses the battery, it loses communication to the computer. It doesn't know what to do, so it'll miss. Um, so right now, we're going to do a quick test on the battery. See if it passes. Okay, we've got 425 cranking amps. We're going to do a cold test. It passes. Okay, that, so the battery passes the test. So we're going to, I'm going to say, okay, that's... That's not a problem for his cold start. I'm definitely going to clean up that terminal and tighten the terminals because it's just going to solve a problem in the future. All right, we're here at the fuel pressure nozzle on this 
Polaris Gentle. Now we just took the bed off, so now we've got the fuel pressure. I've j I fired it up once just to make sure there's no leaks. And go ahead and fire it up, Pat. Not fire it yet. Okay, so there you go. So now we went up to 56 pounds when we hit the key. And spec is 58 pounds, plus or minus two. So the initial starting of the key is within Polaris spec. So I'm kind of at a point where I'm eliminating a fuel pump problem. All right, we're going down to the next step. We've got the valve cover off, getting ready to check the clearance on our valves. And we have to take off the clutch cover in order to rotate the motor and make sure you rotate it counterclockwise, forward basically, to the machine. Otherwise, you'll end up with about three hours worth of extra work you don't really want to do. So what we're doing here, why you have to have this, you have to hook onto this bolt with this wrench right here to be able to turn the motor over to get the valves where you want to be. So right now, I'll show you what, I'll turn this motor over. And I'll, so we're going to get these lobes right here to the top. You want them high up top. exhaust valves. Alright, so now you've got these two exhaust valves, the lobe straight up, now we can check your clearance underneath there. Spec on this machine is eight thousandths exhaust, six thousandths on the intake, plus or minus two thousandths. So here's my eight thousandths, you go underneath there, oh I've got a lot of clearance underneath there. Same with this one, no problem. Got too much clearance for 8,000. Now I've already done this, so I kind of know where we're at. I had to go clear to a 14 thousandths feeder gauge to go underneath these exhaust valves. And here's, that's actually a little loose at 14 thousandths. And this one, 14 thousandths. So right now, these are at 14 thousandths. It's spec is eight thousandths plus or minus two, so the most that you could have is 10 thousandths. These are at 14. I've already checked these. This is the ones at 15 thousandths and the other one's at 14. Then you'd rotate the motor the rest of the way and you'd do each one of these. I've already checked them. These are six thousandths. All the intake are at six thousandths, no problem. They're right on spec. So our problem of our hard starting is our valves. And the, and the reason it's these valves are too loose, they're not opening up enough when they're, so the exhaust gases are not all getting out of the cylinder. When the intake's coming back in, you've still got exhaust gases not, letting, not wanting to fire at all. So you're causing yourself a hard start. It has to get the exhaust out all the way so all the new fuel and air comes in and can fire. So, the good news is, we just found our problem on our Polaris General. The bad news is, now the work starts.